What's up guys, this is Max from Wacky Engineering and today we're going to do the first lesson over using Fusion 360 for practical 3D printing. By the end of this lesson we'll have designed something in Fusion 360 and then we'll export it to, in our case, Bamboo Labs Slicer and then we are going to 3D print the part. Alrighty then, so what we're making today we need some brackets to hold ethernet cable to a wall or to rafters or something like that. And this is a pretty basic part that we're gonna be making. So it seemed like a good first lesson to start with. In these lessons, we're gonna be using different measuring utensils to either reverse engineer different parts or to create our own designs um, to work with other parts. So that's what this first lesson is. So the whole idea of this is we're gonna have a block and then it's gonna have a horseshoe in it, and then we're gonna use this to attach it to the wall. And this is pretty quick and easy, but if you're not familiar with Fusion, it could take just a little bit. So, we will get started. The first thing you're usually gonna do with any project in Fusion, of course you can um, save your project. So, we'll just call this, um, how about lesson one? So, one thing about the controls, and I have my Fusion set up a little bit differently than some people might. And that has to do with which mouse clicks you're going to use to control what. Um, by default, some of the stuff, it wants you to use this cube up here to be able to pivot and see different things. I like to click on your profile up here and then click on Preferences. And then I like to scroll down and then where it says Pan, Zoom, and Orbit Shortcuts, Tinkercad is the selection I like, but if you're used to SolidWorks or something else, or maybe you're not used to anything at all, uh, Tinkercad, I feel like, is the easiest to manipulate what you have on the screen. So that's what I use. Another thing that I highly recommend is that you guys actually go through these lessons with me. Um, I know, you know, just watching it, it's like, oh, I understand how to do that. I understand how to do this. But when you actually do it, like the muscle memory and remembering where the different things are and the different steps. If you pause the video and do it yourself, I promise you, it'll make you learn this stuff much quicker. Now, you can see along the top bar, right now we're in the three-dimensional space. Um, you can kind of see the uh, block at the top here, the cube rotating, but we're in the three-dimensional space. And for the most part, you're gonna have to start in two-dimensional to get started with something. So that's what this is. We're gonna click on Create Sketch. Now they want us to pick a plane. Now if you don't understand every single thing we do in this video, um, just keep watching because the more videos we do, the more you see it, the more you practice yourself, it'll start making sense. So don't freak out if you don't understand everything. We're gonna pick a plane. Um, in this case, it doesn't really matter because in my slicing software on the 3D printer, I can easily rotate the part so I'll just pick one. So we're going to start by just making a square. Um, I know that this Ethernet cable is, looks like 6.3 millimeters. So I need to make this wide enough to where I can have a horseshoe in the middle of it, but then I would still have enough room for a screw to hold it down. So I'm going to start with like, 20 millimeters and we'll go from there so I'm hitting tab we'll do 20 on that one and then on our height here um, I'm gonna do 10 millimeters wide that should be enough yeah we'll go 12 okay so now we have our first shape it's a rectangle right see how these lines are blue they're a lot better if you do black and that's where constraints come in so um, technically a dimension is a type of constraint although it doesn't look like they consider it that in this software but either way we have told it the dimensions so the next step is it knows the dimension of this rectangle but it doesn't know where the rectangle is at in relation to um, our plane so I like to use midpoint for something like this because I don't really care where it's at. The software just needs to know where it's at. Now that everything turns black, we're good to go. So we reach up here and click finish sketch. 
So now we're in our 3D space and you can see we have a little 2D rectangle here. So I'm going to hit, this is a tool you use all the time, extrude. And then it looks like it automatically selected that. So you can see our window that comes up here. Um, there's a lot of different options that you can do. But in this case, we just want to leave it at the default and we just want to go a certain distance. I'm going to say 10. Okay, now we have our first three dimensional shape. So um, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to say I want to cut my little horseshoe shape here or whatever you want to call it. So for me, the easiest way I can think of to do that would be I'm going to click on this surface and then I'm going to create a sketch on that surface. So I'm in 2D right now. I can still drag it and kind of see what's going on, but as you can see, there's my plane and there's where it's going to be, you know, I'm going to be sketching right on that surface. So let me get this measurement again because I already can't remember. Looks like it was uh, 6.3. So let's go with 6.5. And we can make a rectangle. So I like to put my own uh, dimensions on here. So we're just going to go 6.5, click the top and then the bottom. And I'm going to go 6.5, boom. So now we have another square. Now, I want to round these right here. I can add fillets later. So I can do a two dimensional fillet or a three dimensional. Um, and most of the time I do it three dimensional, but in this case, let's just go ahead and throw it on here. So you select the tool, come up to a corner, click on it. It automatically is pulling up 1.7. I'm going to put like three in there and hit enter. Now I'm going to select fill it again. Okay, I gotta zoom in here. There we go. Three, enter, there. Now we have the basis of our shape. Okay, so now we have another shape, a two dimensional shape drawn on our three dimensional shape. And I'm gonna use the extrude tool. So click extrude. Now I'm gonna click on this part of the shape. And then I can do two different things. I could drag this as far as I want to cut that out, you can see it, it's automatically wanting to join. Um, technically, I could change the operation to join here, and now we got some. Either way, um, Command Z, we're going to undo that. Um, but just to cut this out, I can give it a distance, I could drag this, or now that I've selected it, the next thing it's expecting is a distance. Um, if I just click the back side of this, boom. Now it's just going to cut clean through. So hit OK. So now we kind of have most of the shape figured out. Now, something else about Fusion 360 that's nice is we have a timeline down here. And I think I actually want to move this over just a little bit because the screws I'm going to use, drywall screws, this head's pretty, pretty wide. Um, let's measure it real quick. So it looks like it's 8.25 millimeters. So we can go, let's go ahead and just throw the hole in there first and we'll see what it looks like. So there's a couple ways I could do this. I could either draw a circle here and then cut it through and then I could try to taper the top of it. Um, or I can use the hole function up here and just click it. And now I can select a countersinking type of hole. So this um, tool has you know, several different options you can do that kind of make the work quicker for you. So I can hit countersink. Um, I just said that was what, 8.25. Um, my height could be, what did I say it was, 12. Oops. We'll do a 90 degree 
And then now we need the diameter of the hole where the screw part's gonna go through. So I'll measure this and looks like it's 3.7. So let's just go 3.9 to give a little bit of room. Okay, so that's why I was kind of talking about maybe moving this over is see how that's kind of bleeding out a little too far. So I'm gonna hit okay for now. And then what's nice is now you can see where my hole's there. I'm gonna go ahead and move where this is. And see, this is still blue because I never told it exactly where it's at in relation to this. So let's say eight. Mm. How about nine? Okay, that's probably a little closer. So now I can hit finish sketch. Now it updated that. Okay, so now I can look at my hole placement where it's at on this body. And you could try to just kind of drag it where you want it, but with engineering stuff, you really just need to tell it where it's at. So up here for reference, I can hit select. My first reference would come from this edge. Right there. And I can say like six. Oh, maybe I should go five. Yeah, I think I only went 10 wide. Yep, so that should be centered that way. And then we'll select the second reference here. Let's go five on that too. Okay, so it's not quite perfectly centered. Um, I can move this over just a little bit more. There we go. Now it's right in the center. That looks good. And that's pretty much it. So for a first design on the first lesson, that's not too bad. Um, we've already um, named this lesson one. It's calling it V1 now. Um, if you make multiple changes after you save, um, it'll start updating version two, version three, whatever. Um, so we're gonna save it, file. You can click 3D print and have it export straight to um, whatever slicer you want. Um, but I'm just going to hit export and then I'm going to export it as an STL. Um, you could also do a, you know, step file or something like that. So we'll hit export. Now I'm going to open up my, uh, bamboo slicer and I'm going to 3d print it real quick. There we go. Prepare. Let's put it on the X1 Carbon. So we're gonna hit Add Document, Lesson 1. Okay, so it's on its side right now. I think this would print better. Let's just see if it'll auto-orient better. Okay, I'm gonna orient it myself. Okay, with that being black, it's a little hard to see, but you can see the countersink in the top there. There we go. Okay. Um, I'll pick one of my profiles real quick. And slice it and hit print. We'll put the time lapse on and send. All right, well, here's our hold down. Let's see how the screw fits. It's just a little bit tight, but fits good. Check the ethernet cord. So yeah. There's our first part. That's how easy it is from start to finish. You can design it, you can 3D print it, and really this whole thing took, you know, about 15 minutes, and then this part takes, you know, about five minutes to print, so pretty quick and easy. 
If you guys liked this, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the alert if you want to see more of these. We'll see you next time.